All right, welcome back Clinical Problem Solvers. This is Jack here again. And today we're gonna talk about aortitis. And specifically, we're gonna look at the path to the problem of aortitis. Now you may be asking yourself, Jack, what do you mean by paths to the problem? Well, oftentimes when we, when we think and reason through cases, right, we use our different diagnostic schemas or illness scripts once we've arrived at a specific problem case. For example, we may use our dyspnea schema when we discover that a patient has symptoms like shortness of breath. We may use our inflammatory abdominal pain schema, or we may use our vasculitis schema when we recognize the clinical features that suggest either of those clinical problems. And so the paths to the problem are the disease features that may lead us to consider a specific diagnosis. So in this case today, we're going to talk about what are the features that a patient may present with that could lead us on the path towards discovering aortitis. I'm going to pull up the schema here just for us to look through briefly, but then I would encourage you to put the schema away as we talk through this and just think along with me as we talk about these different paths to the problem space of aortitis. All right, so here are the primary concepts that we're gonna use to understand how we can arrive in the problem space of aortitis. Again, aortitis just means inflammation of the aorta or that large vessel that runs throughout our thoracic cavity and intra-abdominal cavity. I encourage you to also check out the other video on an approach to aortitis, as well as the clues that can tip us off to the cause of an aortitis being an infection. In this case today, we're gonna to try to understand what the disease signature of aortitis is using these two categories here. So again, put the schema away, sit back, and just come along with me as we talk through this problem here. So as we said, aortitis as a problem involves inflammation of the aorta, which is a major vessel in the body. That means that the signature of the disease of aortitis is gonna include those two features. There's gonna be an inflammatory signature of disease and there's gonna be a vascular signature of the disease. The inflammatory signature is gonna involve either local inflammatory symptoms that run along the course of the aorta and systemic inflammatory features. So that could look like inflammatory chest pain, Patients who have chest pain plus symptoms of underlying inflammation, things like fever, chills, weight loss, night sweats, usually in an indolent presentation. You may also see inflammatory abdominal pain because the aorta crosses not only the thoracic cavity of the chest, but also the abdominal cavity as well. And that inflammatory abdominal pain will usually include pain within the abdomen, as well as potentially a systemic inflammatory signature. Again, things like fevers, chills, underlying weight loss, or night sweats. In some cases, you may feel a palpable pulsatile mass in the abdomen, which could be from aneurysmal dilation of the abdominal aorta. But the aorta doesn't just run through the intra-abdominal cavity, it also has a retroperitoneal course. And if we think about other diseases of the retroperitoneum, for example, pancreatitis, we can think about there also being back pain as well. So aortitis, one other path to aortitis could be inflammatory back pain. And then finally, patients may not necessarily have features that localize along the course of the aorta at all and can present with just fever of unknown origin. As you listen to these, you may say, wait a second, Jeff, there's tons of other far more common diseases that pre present with inflammatory chest pain, inflammatory abdominal pain, and inflammatory back pain. And you would be 100% correct in saying that. So aortitis is by no means going to be necessarily at the top of our differential when we're walking along these different paths, inflammatory chest pain, inflammatory abdominal pain, inflammatory back pain, or fever of unknown origin. But it is going to be on the list of diagnoses to consider. The good news is that more often than not, as we progress down these paths and think about other causes of, for example, inflammatory chest pain or inflammatory abdominal pain, we're usually going to obtain cross-sectional imaging that will allow us to visualize the aorta. Now that covers the inflammatory signature that could end up leading us to the space of aortitis. 
but there's also a vascular signature. And as with many vascular problems in the body, they can include ischemia or bleeding. In the case of aortitis, we will much more commonly see ischemic complications over bleeding complications. And the ischemic complications could include things like claudication. For example, somebody who notices that their arm tends to get much more fatigued than normal, and that's because the flow through this inflamed aorta is not able to supply blood to a major organ. And we can also occasionally see embolic phenomena that could lead to organ ischemia, right? An, an embolism from the aorta into, for example, the mesenteric vasculature, which could give us, for example, intestinal ischemia, or that embolus can go into the distal extremities and we may see limb ischemia instead. The bleeding signature, while rare, is important to think about because it can be devastating in terms of its complications. The most morbid of the bleeding complications of aortitis are gonna include an aortoenteric fistula, which is when the aorta actually erodes into the GI tract and you get bleeding into the gastrointestinal lumen from the aorta. You can also see, because the aorta connects to the heart, right? We can also see bleeding into the pericardial space causing hemopericardium or bleeding into the thoracic and pleural space causing hemothorax. So I'm just gonna pull up the schema here one more time for us to review these concepts as we close out today. But what I really wanna drive home is understanding that we will always follow a path to a specific problem space in any case we reason through. In this case, we're thinking about what are the possible signatures that a patient can present with that could lead us into the problem space of aortitis. And again, those are gonna primarily relate to the underlying pathophysiology of aortitis, right? Inflammation of a big vessel. The inflammatory signature is gonna include generalized systemic inflammation and potentially local, localizing symptoms along the course of the aorta as it runs through the chest, the abdomen, and the retroperitoneum. And we could have pain that localizes into the chest, the abdomen, and the back as being our correlate for the retroperitoneal space. And then in addition to that inflammatory signature, we may see direct vascular complications, including things like ischemia and less commonly bleeding. All right, clinical problem solvers, thank you so much for tuning in. Please feel free to leave any thoughts you have below in the comments, and we look forward to seeing you the next time as we talk through another clinical problem space. Take care, everyone. We'll see you later.